I've been practicing the getting things done method for many years now, and I've reviewed hundreds of apps to see how well they work with the method. In this video, you'll learn about my framework that I use to match any app against, so you can also do your own research and find the app that suits your needs. Feel free to make any changes to this framework though, because what's most important is that it works for you. If you're not familiar with GTD yet, it's a productivity method that consists of five stages. The first is to capture, which is to save anything that resonates, whether it's a thought, an incoming message, a picture you've taken, or anything else you may want to attend to in the future. The second stage is to clarify, which is assigning meaning to what we've captured, whether that's a task, whether it's an agenda item, an entire project, or anything in between. The third is organize. How can we give a place to anything that we've clarified in a way that makes sense? The fourth is review and reflect, which basically means looking back on what we've done, evaluating how it's going and prioritizing for the future. And lastly, engaging, which is how can we do the things that we need to do with as little friction as possible? And of course, how can these apps support us through all of those stages? The first thing I look for is the presence of an inbox, or at least the ability to easily create one. And just as important, the option to have that be the default place for any new items to land into. Once the presence of an inbox has been established, I look at the various ways to add things to the inbox. The keywords here are quick and easy, because that's how it needs to feel. This means things like a quick add button, an in-app, as well as an out-of-app hotkey, and mobile widgets give an app bonus points in my book. In addition to these quick add options, I look at the various input methods for adding items to the inbox. For me, text-based is usually all I need, but I know many people also use voice memos, photographs, social sharing, smart assistants like Alexa and Siri, or smartwatches. Email integrations can be powerful, so I look for them as well. For example, do I get a forwarding address or even a full Gmail integration? Lastly, I check whether the app has a web clipper. I want to at least save links, but if I can save a web page's content, that's even better. Once I've established how an app can help us capture, it's time to establish how it can help us clarify that raw input. For this stage of GTD, I look at four things. Tasks, projects, notes, and so-called higher horizons. Let's begin with tasks. If a captured item is actionable, that is what we will need to turn it into. This means it will need to have some way of being checked off, preferably through a check mark so I don't have to force the lead a task just to mark it complete. I also want to be able to classify a task as either a next action, something I'm waiting for, in other words, someone else has to perform the task for me, or a backlog item that I may want to attend to in the future, aka someday maybe. This can either be achieved through tags that I can set up myself, or pre-configured taxonomies. Tags are usually the only way to assign context to a task, since these are personal and need to be manually set up. Scheduling functionality is important as well, since not everything can be done now or whenever. Due date and time is something I look for, but start date and time is also a big plus, and not many apps have this yet. I want to be able to set reminders that are separate from a task's due date. For example, to check in with progress, evaluate the priority, or just to be prompted to do it at a specific time. Location-based reminders are a big plus here too, since some tasks are bound to specific locations. Just recently, I had reserved a space at a parking garage in another city. I didn't know when I would have arrived exactly due to traffic, but I did know where I would want to see the QR code to open the gate. Lastly, I want to be able to define routines, either repeating on set intervals and automatically moving on to the next instance, or rolling over, meaning if I have it set to every 10 days and I complete an instance after 13 days, it's still going to be pushed to 10 days after that and not 7. Next up, projects. These are desired outcomes that require more than one step to get to. 
Here I look at the ability to create and manage lists. Generally speaking, a simple task list is sufficient, but an app gets major bonus points in my book if I'm able to break the list up into multiple sections and views. For example, to separate next actions from future tasks or a separate section for support material. There are two types of projects, parallel and sequential. For parallel projects, every associated action can be completed in random order. For sequential projects, there is an order with tasks depending on previous ones being completed before they become available. If I can pre-specify that order once at the beginning of the project and trust that every next task presents itself automatically once I had complete on the previous one, that's a major time saver. When looking at inactionable items, aka notes, I look at how much markdown an app supports for them. Things like clickable URLs, formatable text, and images. I also look at how flexible I am with positioning them. Am I allowed to add them to a project list as support material, or do they have to live in one constrained area of the app? Finally, I check if it supports attachments, like PDFs. There are also some special, more permanent kinds of items, which I lump into the higher horizons category. These include goals, vision, and purpose. For vision and purpose, a note usually suffices. But if you like to track your progress to your goals, look out for functionality that supports this. Next up, let's look at organizing. In my tutorials, I usually present this section ahead of clarifying, since the infrastructure needs to be there before we move things out of the inbox into those new areas. I mainly look at two things here. The first is whether I'm able to create nested lists, and if so, how deep? This can mean having folders, but I prefer having nested lists, which are all actionable since I like to organize them by area of focus first, project second. And since some tasks may be standalone actions related to a focus area, I'd love to be able to park those in the first level list while any project related actions are parked under those respective lists. The second thing I look at is if I'm able to map relations between items. Ideally, I'm able to create an in-app link between two tasks and or notes. TickTick is great at this, as it has a dedicated option for it and creates a link that is automatically formatted into the linked item's title. When it comes to reviewing, we need to have a way to overlook our system with a bird's eye view as quickly and easily as possible. An easy user experience is key here, and I try to answer the following questions. Can I move between lists and tasks seamlessly to evaluate their status? Can I sort items in a list by various parameters like status, context, or priority? Can I sort my lists by their horizon of focus? So a natural bottom-up or top-down, whichever you prefer, review style is possible. All these things combined subtly impact your ability to review as they make it easier, more accessible, and therefore more likely that you'll actually do it. In addition, I check whether it's possible to create and use templates for repetitive tasks, projects, and rituals like the weekly review. Ideally, I'm able to start them from pre-created templates with all their statuses, dependencies, tags, etc., all set up. And finally, let's look at engaging, actually doing those things that we need to do. And the key here is friction-free. There needs to be zero friction between me looking at my app, telling me what I need to do, and my ability to actually do it. And the number one most important thing to achieve that, in my opinion, is filters. I rely on them for creating specific next action plus context lists, so I don't have to either scroll through projects to find a task in my current context, or select only one context tag that may also display tasks that aren't next actions just yet. I then want to have easy access to these filters. Bonus points for an app if I can position them on top of it or outside of the app via desktop or mobile widgets. Knowing what to do is of course essential, but some help on doing it doesn't hurt either. Things like focus or Pomodoro timers, a distraction-free mode, or other features that help with concentration help an app rank higher in my book. An app's design is also important. This is somewhat subjective, of course, but I just feel better, more motivated, and more professional when I use an app that is designed beautifully. These apps truly become an extension of ourselves. And just like with our clothes, our house, and our vehicle, looks matter. A very small but important detail here is the ability to add emojis to list, task, or filter titles. It gives a visual cue that I found very helpful, and in many of my tutorials, lots of people have commented expressing the same. And that is it. I hope this framework will help you find the best productivity app 
for your needs. Now, if you don't want to do all the legwork yourself of researching every single app out there, you can go to my playlist and watch videos on lots of different apps, and I regularly review new ones. Leave a comment to tell us what is the thing you look out for when selecting a productivity app. I'll see you in the next video.